In this video, I have two example 6x6 solves highlighting things such as my thought process and some of these advanced techniques. Okay, so the first thing to note with these example solves and with Big Cube example solves in general is that many different people have all sorts of different habits and techniques for solving the centers and solving the edges. And so things that, things that I do in my solve may not necessarily always be similar to things that people like Kevin or Max or other fast 6x6 and 7x7 solvers would do in their solves. So for big cubes in particular, I think that watching example solves from different people is really beneficial as opposed to just watching example solves from one person and trying to copy exactly how they go about solving. So with that in mind, uh, these example solves are not going to be particularly prescriptive. Uh, so I'm not going to be saying, you know, you should always do it like this uh, because in many cases there's going to be so many different options in a 6x6 or 7x7 solve. The other thing is, it's not going to be super realistic and reflective of a speed solve because we, I essentially have uh, unlimited inspection time and look ahead, so I'm going to be thinking things through a little bit more and some of the things I do in here might not be you know, the things that I would see in speed solves necessarily, I'm more going to be focusing, focusing on efficiency here. Okay, so let's start out solving this 6x6. Um, I'm kind of looking for what to do for my first few bars on 6x6 and I see I've got you know, these three green pieces and this one here, so that's a one move first bar. And I also see I've got these two here and these two green ones as well. So what I can do is make the first two bars without using any rotations. So using this one back here, I can do something like wide U like that to build this. And I notice I've got this as well, but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to do R prime, U2 prime, R, U, and then do an L prime like that. Now after this, I see I've got these two and the other inner six by six center piece is here. So probably what I'll do is rotate, do a U2, pair it up, and then check what comes into this face, in which case I have this oblique center. So I can also pair that up and then insert that into the green layer. Now, I don't see any green pieces on here. I'm gonna quickly check if I've got green pieces on the bottom here. And unfortunately I do, I have these two, which is not a very good case. Um, what I'm gonna do is take them out of the bottom by doing something like this. So I can do R prime F prime R, and then probably U prime wide R prime F wide R, like that. And that wasn't particularly efficient, but it didn't involve any rotations. So now I'm in this position and I just, I just need to find the last green corner center. So I've got, these ones which I can move here, and this one here. So I can do B prime, U2, U prime, wide L prime. So I guess that wasn't super efficient, but it did avoid some rotations. So after that, probably what I would do is just flip over and see what I have for my blue center. I don't have very much. Um, I've got these two and this one, so I'd probably just insert that right away and then go ahead and finish it off by just inserting something else from this middle layer here. Um, after that, uh, there's a few options. Probably what it makes sense to do is to do these three. So build an outer blue line with this one, like so. Insert it like that. Then what I can do is use these pieces and this one and this one to do another inner line. Insert it. And after that, I see I've got this one and this one, which I can solve like this. And then I'll need probably, probably what I'll do is rotate like this, move this one here, U2 down R2, and then insert it like so. So next up, uh, it's a matter of choosing what center to do next. And I guess yellow might be a decent option here. Um, probably, yeah, I don't see too much. I guess if I saw this stuff on the back here, I might go for red, but Yellow is not too bad. I can probably just bring these two down and bring them back up to create this and then use those two obliques to create a one by four there and slice down like that. Uh, after this, I would probably have to do a rotation to uh, work on my next one by four bar. So I can use these two in this one. Then U R prime, F prime, L2, like that. Now, what I wanna do here is quickly check for this other yellow oblique center on the back. 
and I see that I have these two corner centers here, so I can do R prime U R, bring this one up, R two U prime R two, bring this one down like so. And next, I need to do red on this face, so I'm not going to rotate. I'm just going to do F prime R prime F R like that to create the first one by four bar. Then check on the back to see if there are any pairs of obliques, because um, I remember I had this corner here. So I didn't see any uh, obliques paired up together, but what I can do is probably just uh, create a one by three at the back there, and then do R2, U, R2. Um, and notice that when I was doing that, I didn't you know, look back down at this center, center face to make sure that I'd solved it correctly. Now what I would do is pair up these two with this one, and then this one as well, insert them. Now, probably what I can do is hmm, just an F slice up to pair it up and then do something like that. Now I see I've got this one by four bar on white already solved. So probably what I'll do is make an inner one by four bar on the top and then just insert it down like that. Now I see I've got these two and these two, so I can pair them up and insert. And these last four white pieces will go on this front face here. And before I do that, I notice I've got these three blue and reds. So probably what I'll do is just do an R move to move them out of the way. So remember that I'm gonna have blue and red pieces in the back here. Finish off the center. And then as I was doing that, I'm looking for the blue and red pieces that I'm going to solve next. So I don't see any blue and reds here, but I did see it on the bottom here. So I'll solve that, slice across, and I see these two white and reds, and this white and red. And before I did the U, I saw this white and red as well. So I would insert those like that. Then I've got this white and red, slice it across there. After that, hmm, there's a few different options. I saw these green and reds. Um, there's also the orange and yellows. Probably what I'd be inclined to do is insert these orange and yellows to create three there. And now I just need to find the last orange and yellow, which isn't around the middle or on the top. So I'll flip over and it's back here. So I'll insert, slice, flip, slice back. And whilst I was doing that, I saw uh, these white and white and greens. I also saw this blue and orange uh, block back here. So probably, probably what I'll do is solve the blue and orange block, but keep the white and greens in mind for later. So these two, and this one, I don't see the final blue and orange. So I'll flip over. Um, okay, that was a mistake. It was actually down here. So what I'll do is just flip, insert like that. And before I take this out, I saw these green and reds these two and this one. So probably what I'll do is flip over, solve the green and reds as well. So this last one here, and then just take it out. Now I've got four solved on this face. I can flip over and uh, work on my last three edges here. Um, these white and greens that I saw before are now all going to be are all going to be really easy to solve. So I can insert that there, insert these. And I saw a bunch of different stuff. White and blue is going to be really nice. It's just this one, these two, and this one. And then orange and green is going to be really good as well. There. Flip, restore my centers, and now work on my last four edges. Um, I see immediately that I have a case like this where I can just slice inner there, flip, and then slice back and then do just a simple cycle. So take this out from the back, slice, flip, slice back. Uh, at this point, I don't have anything good. So what I'm gonna do is take out this edge into the top layer and do a cycle to solve all of my inner edges. So slice to solve those there and slice back. And then uh, I can solve these yellow and blues, slice, flip, slice back. And now I just have a simple last two edge algorithm. Okay, 
then I'm going to go for the blue cross and I'll let you know if anything comes up. Uh, yeah, this is kind of annoying. Don't know which, which pair to solve first. Maybe this one. But it kind of requires a rotation and solves into the front, so not great. All L parity. All L and PLL parity and Y permutation. Okay, let's have a look at this scramble. Uh, I see a bunch of things on orange, so and I actually see that this is going to be really easy to create a two by four bar on, uh, block on orange, just using one by twos. So I've got these two, these two, these two, and I need to find a, an oblique centerpiece to match with this one to put the one by two down here. Obviously, I can use this centerpiece, but that's not going to be particularly efficient. Um, and luckily enough, there is one back here. So I can just do something like L, U prime, R prime like that, and then U2, R prime, U prime, R, white R prime to create this two by four on the front here. Then I'll flip over. Um, I see that I've got this one and these two. So I can make a, uh, these three out of four bar pieces, then probably just do a D so that I don't have to rotate and put that down there. Now, next up, I see I've got these two orange corner centers and these two orange pieces here. So probably what I can do is F prime, R prime, U2, L, and then a wide U like that to finish off the bar, uh, the center. After this, I notice I've got these three reds. So I can just do U, R, insert that one. Then after this, I've got this one and this one and these two. So that's straightforward enough to solve and slice and put it up. Then after this, I see these two over here, nothing on the front and then these two pieces over here. So probably what I'll do is rotate like this to create my next inner one by four. So this one, this one, and this one. Rotate, insert, then rotate back. And now this last one by four is gonna be very easy to complete. So it's just R prime to pair up these two and these two then U2, then U, and then insert it. Now I'll do my Z rotation. I see I've got these three greens already solved for me, um, which is going to be nice. Uh, I don't see anything else that good here. Maybe blue would be a decent option as well. Um, yeah, I would say either green or blue in this scenario. Uh, there might be more, slightly more blue pieces available, but it shouldn't hopefully matter too much. So I'll use these two. Sorry, these three and this one. So F, U prime, R prime, F prime. Then I'll do a rotation to put those on the bottom. And luckily we have quite a nice case for the next two by four, the next one by four bar. So R prime, F, R, U prime, R2. And as I was doing that R2, I noticed these pieces here. So I can go straight ahead and do something like R prime, U, R. And then pair these two up as well, uh, pair these ones up as well and then do L2. So I did that whole thing uh, without doing any rotations. And then next up, we've got this inner center, this one, uh, sorry, oblique, this oblique, this one, and this one. So they're all in the same line. So I can just do something like L prime, white R prime, R prime, and then undo those moves after a U move there. So now I've solved this green center here. I need to solve the white center onto the front face here. And I notice I've got this two by two block, which is going to be quite nice. Um, and I've got this two by one here. So I can insert that two by one and then use this corner piece and this oblique to create another two by one and store it down there. Um, this is probably somewhere where I might use half centers. So, or a half center style approach. So I see I've got these three and this one as well as this one by four on blue. So I want to, what I'm going to do is actually solve two bars of blue over to this location without doing a rotation as well. Remembering that this is the only white piece that I see, so the other white pieces must be on the top here, which they are. Um, this isn't the best case. Um, we'll have to work with it. So what we're going to do is do U, R2, U prime, R2 to create this one by three. 
then attach this to it, and then R2, U2, R2, like that, and then finish off the white center. So these two, this one, this one on the bottom, R2, U, R prime, U, R, U, R2 prime, like that. Uh, that solves the white center onto the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do is just pair up this piece with this piece and see what we have here. Um, this one and this one. R U2 R prime. Um, I see these blue and yellow, so I might just like put the blue and yellow there and keep it in mind as my first edge. And I saw this blue and yellow here as well. So what I'm gonna do is do an R prime, U2. I don't see any blue and yellows here, so I'm flipping over and I see this blue and yellow piece here. So I can insert it, move it across to this front right slot. Then uh, green, and yellow, green and yellow looks quite good. So I've got this one, these two, and this one. So I can do something like R, U, R prime, big U2, R prime, U prime, R, U, like that. And I was probably gonna go for the white and blue because I see these two white and blues here. I don't see any other white and blues on top here. So I'm just gonna take that out. This one is here, flip over and continue working. So I've got this white and blue one. And again, whilst I'm doing that, I'm looking ahead. So, you know, inserting that, solving it, shouldn't be looking at the white and blue pieces, should be looking at other things. And in this case, uh, white and red is a decent option. Uh, there's actually not that much here at all. Like there's no pieces together at all in this top layer or around this middle layer, unfortunately. So white and red, we've got this one. It's a bit inefficient, but hopefully it will be decent to execute. And this one, then, yeah, this, this look ahead is quite hard. Uh, green and white is gonna be okay. So I'll insert this one, move those two across, this one here, flip it, slice it across, and then white and orange is gonna be quite good as well. And then as I'm rotating, as I'm inserting this, I'll probably just rotate over to this side, go for yellow and red perhaps. Um, yeah, it's not great. Flip those last yellow and reds here. Uh, then, Blue, uh, then orange and red, so these two, this one and this one. Take it out and then slice back. Okay, for my last four edges, I see there's nothing very good at all. Um, I guess the best option here is probably blue and orange. So I've got this blue and orange, this one here and these two here. So what I can do is take out this back left edge slice to solve this blue and orange, and then slice back. And that solves the blue and orange and leaves me with three edges remaining to solve. Um, probably what I would do next is again, just solve the inners. So take this one out from the back, slice that across to solve the inners, and then insert and slice back to, uh, yeah, to complete the inners cycle. Then I see that these, this uh, green and orange one here can work well with these ones. So I'll insert that, slice, insert, slice back. And unfortunately I've got a parity case. But after that, I can go ahead and solve three by three. Uh, red cross is gonna be good. Oh, parity. PLL, I mean OLL and PLL parity, and then we're done.